Hello again, this is Alan, and this would be lesson number 10 in the series. Building a computer program from scratch. Uh, from scratch doesn't mean exactly from scratch. Um, we will use the debug program, so we'll not be actually writing it in binary or something. Um, but as far as uh, compilers or anything like that, we, we won't use those tools. Uh, and the reason for that is because we like to explore, I would like to explore what, what the process of compiling a program is. And so that's essentially what we're trying to do. We're going to be the compiler. You know, for a very simple program, I don't want to waste too much time on it. So this will probably take more than one session. Now the first thing I want to uh, talk about <coughs> is um, something I've been avoiding until now. <coughs> avoiding for a good reason, because uh, in a way there's just a little bit of insanity involved in this. And that's these numbers here, these numbers that I've been ignoring all the time, uh, which also appear in these registers that I have not discussed, will now do so. Um, and I have to tell you about these because part of uh, building our program will involve uh, seeing this change. And if you see it change, that means something happened and we should understand what's going on. So that means I need to tell you about something uh, that is unfamiliar to you called uh, real mode. Now, I don't know if they originally called this uh, real mode, but under the debug program, and with the simulated 8086 computer, the simulation is that the environment that we're in is what used to be called real mode. Okay? Now, processors uh, like the, uh, this is a Pentium something or other, have different modes of operation. Uh, uh, currently, Windows runs in a type of a special type of mode called protected mode, but even within that um, uh, category, there are different modes. <laughs> more and more and more uh, ways of uh, organizing the uh, execution flow and the data management and so on of the system. But the original mode of the 8086 was what eventually became called, you know, God acquired the name real mode, and that's what I'm going to explain. And that's where these numbers have, uh, will uh, tell us about. So, first, I'm just going to tell you uh, that this, all these numbers, Tell me where this 7 is, where this number 7. That is, this amounts to an offset in memory. You think of memory, uh, it's a great big list of the final thing here. You think of the memory as starting from 0 and going on the end. Then, um, at any given point, the instruction pointer uh, or any other pointer is uh, pointing at some position in that in that memory space. So it doesn't have to be the IP. So I'll just read it and the blank bar here. The question is. 
How do we translate this number into an offset from zero in memory? And that's where the little insanity bit comes in. This is how they do it. Now the first part, the top four numbers, are called the segment. So I'll use the letter S. And the bottom part is called the offset, but I don't want to use O because it looks like zero, so I'll use X. Okay? And to find out your position, suppose that this is our position, uh, that's quite an easy calculation. All you do is simply multiply S by 10, so that's S, 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 0, plus X, 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 X. Okay? Now, I don't know who came up with this scheme and why they decided to do it exactly this way. But to me, that's a little bit nuts. For one thing, it, it tells you that there are um, almost infinitely many ways to specify the same location. You know, all you gotta do is uh, increase, increase this bit by 10 and then decrease this by 1 and, uh, you know, uh, S's by 1 and I get the same address. <coughs> so that means that address the lookup uh, is not unique. So every address has, uh, I haven't worked out exactly how many combinations, but a lot of combinations, different ways of ex being expressed. <coughs> and the other problem is that this way of representing a position uh, leads you, uh, limits how many how much space you can put a point at, you know, point to. That is, there's a maximum value that you can have here. And that maximum isn't very big. You know, you might have, for instance, on your machine, suppose this is the maximum. Here's the maximum. We'll work that out in a minute. But your machine could have memory going off way over here, but there's no way for you to get to it because there's no way for you to specify that number using this uh, procedure in real mode. So that's why you have to switch into a different mode uh, if you want to go and look at all your other information. Which nowadays, most of the information is on the other side, in the early days, this amount, which we haven't figured out yet, was thought to be enough. Okay, so here's the, here's a puzzle for you. I'm going to ask you this question. <coughs> now, I could write this down. Yeah, the biggest number I can put for the S's, and then put the biggest number I can put for the X's, and say that that's the maximum uh, value for, for that um, position, or the maximum position I can address. Now, what I want you to do is hit the pause button or something, and Ask yourself why that's wrong. And this is a good, such a great example of some of the subtleties involved in the finite world, or the world of finite numbers. This is totally invalid. You cannot, you can never get to this address using this scheme. Why? Hello, welcome back. I hope you Spent some time thinking about that puzzle. I took a little break. Uh, actually, I took a little break trying to uh, think of a good way to explain the answer. And I've come up with a, 
what I think is probably the best, the easiest way to see it. Now, this is a really a tricky one because the question is, how come this is not equal to itself? You know, it's a weird question. Why can't I write this down? I've just written it down. What's wrong? I mean, what's your problem? Well, here's my problem. Um, before, actually, before I get to my problem, just consider this problem. This is not really a problem. This is easy. Suppose I want to add the uh, one. I'm going to add one to this. Now, what do you get? Well, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you the answer. Well, I'm going to tell you part of the answer. Obviously, these are all going to become zero. Because that f is like nine, so you get tens. Now, there's going to be a carry. Where does the carry go? In regular adding, it would just go there. That'd be fine. But this is not regular adding. Remember, these people are insane. So it doesn't go there. Well, instead of trying to figure it out by, uh, you know, some god-awful means, let's just look at what the actual answer is. The actual answer in regular numbers, just as I just said, is this. So that means that this one here, okay, as far as this register goes, is, okay, take this away, since these are, these are these times 10, the number uh, 100,000 or 10,000, you drop the zero off, means that the, that one goes in this slot. Okay? So, in fact, the answer, I have an x back, and if I add 1 to this, get rid of it. So, if I add 1 to this, I get this. Okay? That's easy enough. No problem. Now, let's consider this number. What happens if I add 1 to this? Well, according to what I just said, that 1, these are all going to become 0. And that 1 is going to get added to this, f. And then, we've got a carry. But there's nowhere to go. So we can't, so that's the biggest possible number you can represent in this format. f and x. Okay. All right. So, trick you a little bit, and uh, then we, now we know the answer. So the answer is five f's. Five f's is the uh, terms of bits. Each of these has four, so we got twenty bits. And uh, so we need to figure out two to the twenty. 2 to the 20. I don't know if this number is familiar with to you, but that's 2 to the 10 squared. If you like, it makes it easier to work out. And 2 to the 10 you can do slowly. So, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, uh, 32, 64. 128 by 1024. 1024 squared equals, that's the definition, if you probably know, of 1 <coughs> meg, 1 megabyte. So the maximum here is 1 megabyte. So, that, that put a limit on the amount of memory, uh, not that you could add to the system, 
but that you simply could address using this wacky uh, address uh, addressing scheme. <coughs> you know, I don't know why they use this way of uh, figuring out addresses, but that just happens to be the way they did it. Maybe the circuitry was easier to do or something. The reason that they want, the reason you want these segments in the first place is to kind of allow you to uh, point in different places at the same time. And that's why you have those four registers, uh, DS, CS, ES, and whatever the other one is. Um, uh, SF, or thinking. <clears throat> so in a, a great big program, what they used to call the huge memory model, that means you could go all the way up to one meg, <clears throat> uh, all of these would tend to be different. CS would point at the code. So this would be a code segment. DS would point to your data. So it's like you get 64k of each, but actually you get more. ES is what is called the extra segment. There's no real meaning. And SS is called the stack segment. And that's where that mysterious stack uh, is located. Yeah, I haven't explained that either, but we'll get to it soon. Okay. And so, uh, typically, uh, if you want to find a, if you want to uh, address some memory, uh, you have to write two things down. If I, if I want to retrieve a piece of data from memory, and, uh, the default is DS. Okay, so I could say move into AX <coughs> some number uh, DX, let's say. And that would be the same as defaulting to having a little DS here. <coughs> uh, but then I could perhaps, uh, maybe I could put a new value in DS and address another, a different uh, 64K uh, range of memory. But they're always working in these 64K chunks. And uh, it all becomes very, very, very complicated. For the kind of program that we're going to work with, a COM program, and only a 64k limit. So that means you put ev everything can go with the same segment. You only need one segment. So for a COM program, we don't you have to worry about uh, those values. Uh, they never change for us. But uh, what we're going to be doing in the next, I guess this is getting long now, uh, in the next uh, tutorial, uh, is we're going to be making a few, uh, making use of some of the system calls, and that's going to involve use uh, change, uh, the, the change anyway, some of these registers. And so you'll, at least now you'll know a little bit about what those registers mean. Anyway, I hope this works out. I changed some sound settings. We'll see. Thanks for watching. Bye.